Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Let's continue with Chapter 2, Design, Outline. I call this part two. We'll talk about mechanical properties, talk about internal pressure, just an introduction. Then then we'll talk about external hoop stresses and then we'll introduce stress intensification factors. P31.4 has very specific requirements uh, for these three essential elements. The coefficient of thermal expansion, the modulus of elasticity, and Poisson's ratio. They basically provided values for those and they want the designer to stick within those values. About the thermal expansion coefficient, uh, the rule they have very simplified rules for that. For carbon, low alloy and high tensile steel they give a specific value if you're below a specific temperature in this case the magic number is 250 fahrenheit or less than 120 degrees centigrade above that it's engineer's judgment modulus of elasticity they say you're supposed to take the modulus of elasticity based on ambient temperature. So you're not, you don't need to, to make a temperature adjustment. Then they say for all steel, use 0.3. More about internal pressure, B31.4, basically breaks the effects of internal pressure into th three groups, centrifugal, or sorry, circumferential hoop stress, restrained pipelines, and unrestrained pipelines. Now go back to strength and materials classes back in school. And if you take a pipe cross section, you're, you're gonna see a lot of forces associated with their internal pressure. In yellow, it's eternal pressure, and in, in orange and red are the resulting forces. You've got longitudinal stresses, which occur out longitudinally along the pipe, and we also have the circumferential st hoop stresses. And these the circumferential hoop stresses are double the longitudinal stresses. And so they put more emphasis on the hoop stress when they determined something like the wall thickness of the pipe. Section 402.3 defines the hoop stress from classical equations as the diameter of the pipe, the outside diameter of the pipe, times the internal gauge pressure divided by the wall thickness, and you divide that by two. The, there's two equations shown there, that one is designed for customary units, and the other is designed for um, SI units. Note that these equations are based on the classical equations for thin-walled uh, membranes, in in theory there, there's two sets of rules there's one for thick walls and one for thin walls so there is a little test there to make sure that the these equations apply so when d over t is less than 20 or uh is not applicable section 4 0.2.3 defines the hoop stress from classical equations as the diameter of the pipe, the outside diameter of the pipe, 
times the internal gauge pressure divided by the wall thickness, and you divide that by two. The, there's two equations shown there, that one is designed for customary units, and the other is designed for um, SI units. Note that these equations are based on the classical equations for thin-walled uh, membranes. In, in theory, there, there's two sets of rules. There's one for thick walls and one for thin walls. So there is a little test there to make sure that the, these equations apply. So when D over T is less than 20, or uh, it's not applicable. Now let's get into the, the equations here. Um, give you an example. A103 grade B pipe, very common pipe, six inch diameter. We look it up in the corresponding codes and we come up with a 6.625 diameter. A, a turn of pressure of 100 PSIG and uh, a, te a, a thickness of 0.28 based on standard wall pipe. And then we do a quick check to make sure that our ratio, our pipe is thin enough. So we do a check and we find we're at 57, which is greater than 20. So therefore these equations apply. So then uh, we, we calculate the pressure and the hoop stress is uh, 1,000 1, and uh, 183 PSIG. Now, how come this doesn't take into account corrosion allowance, mill tolerance, and so on? Well, you got to go to section 403 because they use that for calculating wall thickness. When it comes to the stress, they just use this equation. So it's a, it's a departure from what you've seen before. So we will, we will discover uh, that in, in uh, future editions. External pressure. Use the same equations as the internal hoop stress equations, and you're fine. Now, what you're trying to determine here is the collapse pressure of the pipe, maybe due to weights, uh, or, or sorry, due to external pressures like being underwater. The, you know, note also that there's a set of rules that apply. It's for offshore piping systems and they have additional considerations. And so for offshore piping, re please refer to chapter nine. Stress intensification takes into account the different shapes and stiffnesses that result of different type of pipe components. For example, up till now, the hoop stress equation has only taken into account a, a, a cylindrical pipe. But what happens if you have elbows or, or T's or bends or changes in direction? Somehow you have to take that into account. So there is a long tradition with stress intensification factor and it goes back to a fellow by the name of Marco. And so uh, there are three ways and in the and the first ways um, but basically before ASME gets into these three approximation methods they have a statement they said that if you don't have any better data uh, like you don't have FEA or modeling or, or, or something more intense to figure out how flexible a component is or how much like uh, so that you can find out how much stress it's going to take um, then then you can use these equations and they're based on a long lot of history and, and but they are very conservative okay uh, there's table 4.02.1 and it's been around a long time and it has uh, you know a, a, a way of calculating it then there's something called chart a which has been there forever when you go back 60 70 years all they used was charts to do these approximations and later on uh, when in the advent of computers and these uh, modeling like caesar and everything they they asked me and 
and these groups got together and they created B31J, which uh, it gives you, uh, allows a computer model to create more reproducible data. So if you have uh, one program A and program B, you're all gonna get the same value. And that that's, was the problem before when you approximate, use a chart, you, you had different values. So they, they created B31J uh, so that the data that we get is more uh, consistent. Okay, let's take an example of table 402. And there's a number of different shapes here, but we're gonna, we're gonna use the elbow, okay? And we're gonna use a standard welding elbow that's in, um, in ASME. There's short radius elbows and there's long radius elbows. And there's another type of elbow called a, a bend, and they're usually there for uh, very you know small angles and with a large radius. But those, these rules apply. Or these, um, yeah, anyway. So, so here we go. So let's. You have to start with the flexibility characteristic. And I always thought, why, why wouldn't they put that in the first column? But anyways, it's just a, a description of the geometry of a pipe. And so you've got, you know, your bend radius. You've got your your radius, which is your mean diameter. Okay, so that's like the the middle of the pipe. And, and then you've got the thickness, okay? And then you basically use the, the new thickness of the pipe, unless you're doing something where you're evaluating uh, the end of life cycle and you want to know the flexibility. But the pipeline code uh, in 31.4, they just care about the new. So from that, you go take H, which is your, basically your description of how, your, how stiff your pipe is, and you pump it into a flexibility factor. And then you got you use it to calculate your um, your inline uh, stress intensification, your in plane, and then you use that again to calculate your out of plane stresses. So, what is this in plane stress? Well, it causes the elbow to close or open in the plane formed by two ends of the elbow. That's the best definition I could find. Out of plane would be when one end of the elbow moves out of the plane while keeping the other one in a steady area. So you can, you can imagine that these values must be different because uh, the pipe would behave differently because one is symmetric and then one is non-symmetric. Now let's go through an example. We're gonna take uh, the elbow that we talked about earlier. And we're gonna apply a diameter, a six inch elbow. Standard in outside diameter is 6.625 by definition of uh, the following code shown there. Now the thickness for a standard wall pipe, same examples before. Now it's a long radius elbow. This is tricky. So a six inch pipe is a nine inch um, radius elbow. So if you have a 3D elbow, then it's three times that, okay? But you'll never, you, know, you won't see that in standard ANSI stuff. It's either one short radius or a long radius. So then we go to R. R is the um, basically the, 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 the mean diameter, or sorry, the mean radius of the, of the part. So we have to make an adjustment with what we know and to get the mean radius. And then we basically, once we're ready, we, we just go and plug in these values. So we take the, the thickness, the radius, and the, um, you know, the radiuses, and we, away we go. And then we go and we, pop, we calculate K, then we calculate uh, II, and then we calculate IO, and that's all there is to it. And uh, a lot of these calculations are machine done nowadays, so it's very quick. Now, let's look at the traditional method, the very first methods, which were charts. So we calculated 0.25 earlier. Basically, you go up, you calculate your, your K factor, your flexibility for your elbows, and then you get your value. 
If you go back a slide, you will see that they approximately matched. It's not a bad system if you just want to quickly check to see roughly where you are. This is the other one. This is one of the intensification factors. And the middle one is for MITRE, which is not in our example, but it, it's, uh, it's another interesting one. It can be quite interesting to work on. Now this table has a lot of little tiny notes that you should be aware of and limitations. Some of them that apply to this elbow only, there are other ones for other configurations, but we're focusing on the elbow note three. Uh, it applies to bending in any plane. That sounds good. Bending factors can't be less than, than one, which makes sense because you wouldn't be intensifying anything. Uh, the, the torsion factors are 1.0, and you'll see that in B31J that I've noticed. Another note that applies to uh, elbows is note five. It's about uh, flange stiffness correction factors. If you have flanges, you should be taking into account that the flange will make um, the, the elbow stiffer because it, it, it uh, prevents the elbow from going oval. So there's a couple of correction factors right there uh, just for, for more corrections. Cast butt uh, welding elbows may be heavier and increase the pipe stiffness. So that this is another warning about using stress of intensification factors. If you're using heavy castings, then it's going to be stiffer and the moats may not apply. In large diameter, thin walled elbows and bends, there may be an adjustment required and they have the following equations to assist you with that. Recall that, uh, that you remember P from before the pressure and the elastic modulus in, uh, is, is there and that's in the cold condition. They, they, they ask you to do that and R is the radius. Uh, little r and then r the big r is the the bend radius and that's about it that's note seven i hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by athabasca engineering solutions we'd love to hear your feedback and and your thoughts on further videos and we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.